definitely going to gamify. That's like we're very happy to gamify what's going on because what we're saying is we want to enjoy this time. A bit like the lobster suddenly getting back out and going back into the sea to escape. Ha ha, you're not eating me today. If someone changed the channel on the TV without permission, it, it's just, I'm on a rant, I'm on a rave, I'm straight for the juggler. In the room with 52 Jokers Wild. Start. Oh, I, well, you said, I said, he said, she said. You mentioned the word triggers to me earlier on, and you said we might talk, well, I think it was in our last po podcast, it popped up somewhere. And so the word trigger, what does that trigger with me or with you? And I'm going, so I, I, no, I don't know who likes so only fools and horses out there because I immediately think of Trigger. And he's a very simple chap. And there was one instance where he was talking about his broom and he was getting a prize for having this broom for 30 years or however number of years for his whole career, he had one broom. But when you questioned it and delved deeper, it had 16 heads and 27 you know, staff bits. So it's a one broom, but it's been replaced over the 30 years constantly and this is the strange thing you know we have one life we're living it and we we think it's the same the whole time yet it's changing every every single every single day now what does that have to do with triggers well trigger is one thing what triggers me i'm easily triggered i'm easily set off on one now i'm not going to go on my rant for the i'm easily set off on a rant but i'm not going to do that because george asked me a simple question go off and do one what triggers you, George? And then I'll sort of come back in. <laughs> right, okay. Well, well, well the, the, the idea of the trigger is just to see... Uh, we, I've been watching some stuff with uh, Jordan Peterson and he was starting to talk about psychological issues that people were having and suddenly started to discover that when he was having conversations with his patients, they would mention certain things. Now, as a teacher, I've been trained to think of is someone a visual or a kinesthetic or an auditory learner. So when they say to me, look, George, I, I really can't hear what you're saying, then it's an auditory person, that's their trigger. Uh, I can't see what you're getting at, means they're visual, and it just doesn't feel right, means they're kinesthetic. Well, uh, Carl Jung had been talking about the fact with his patients that there was one guy that suddenly couldn't walk and he just said he couldn't go on. And however it was mentally he was feeling had suddenly been, it had triggered this paralysis in his legs. Now, in our case, what we tend to do is we have these conversations. And as we have these conversations, it ignites an idea inside our head. It triggers a train of thought. And that allows us to jump in and to start talking about a process that we've experienced. Now, I, I look immediately, you're, you've read up on something, you're talking to signs of, of uh, Carl, 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 Young. Who, Carl Young, who, Carl, who, Carl, whoever, I don't bloody care, I don't even know, and he's young, he's old, doesn't matter to me, will I read the book, I haven't even got it, I might do later, it's not Actually, triggering anything Actually, you're in, already in discussing and, and exploring Young in the artist way, because Judy, Julia Cameron is constantly talking about Jung. So whether or not you unconsciously, I would say, you are taking in some of his processes and going through some of his methodologies. So two steps twice removed. I'm studying Jung by osmosis and realizing, translated through Sir Julia's language, I am going on these journeys. And actually, that, that, that is, that I do believe that because that's the sort of things that's questioning myself as I walk down the hall and I'm having my breakfast, my dinner, my tea and going, what triggers, back to what I was saying, what triggers me? What sets me off on one? Now, that's just taking the negative connotation for a second and going, if someone changed the channel on the TV without permission, it, it's just, I'm on a rant, I'm on a rave, I'm straight for the juggler, I'm knee-jerk reaction. There is no association to the to the the amount of magnitude of reflex if i was watching a program no one noticed and they changed the channel i'm losing it now i'm going that's crazy stuff for for like a, a like for like comparison of i oh, just asked to change it back you know why didn't you just ask for well let someone know informed them no 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 i'm too busy on my rant and rave now i'll come back full swing and maybe realize that I am the biggest child in the room. And, and that's what was happening yesterday. I think I was saying to you, George, 
we were doing my little bit of exercise with my daughter and then she said you're doing it wrong and I really I immediately went to well I can't do it and then she says well there's no point in doing it and then we saw what you saw was the same personality going back and forward into a spiral loop and I left the room I got out of there I'm giving up forever I'm never doing this again and all it was was a little press up that I couldn't actually do for five seconds now it took an hour to come back round and go that was a bit of an overreaction. What the hell triggered that? There must be something else subliminally. Well, something interestingly, the um, again, Jordan Peterson, I was watching one of his videos and uh, somewhere in my rack here, I have his 12, prince, 12 rules for life. And his very first chapter, he talks about lobsters. You may be going, I'm not a lobster. But what he was talking about was hierarchies. And he was saying that the hierarchies that we so lovingly adore in our institutions are actually are something that's about 300, 300 million years old. We can't get away from them because we, we organize ourselves in hierarchies. And one of the interesting things that you were suddenly exploring, whether consciously or unconsciously with your daughter, was a shift in hierarchies. Because all of a sudden you'd become the parent you were the parent, you were the teacher, and the child was the one that always looked up to the parent. But all of a sudden, in the role that you were, you were exploring, which was quite a difficult one, I think, for both of you, was all of a sudden, the child became the parent, and the parent became the child. The roles had, had, had shifted round, and the hierarchies had changed. I remember, and I was, don't look get too negative, but I remember when my father was dying, he, he, had, he was acting almost like a child, and I, for the very first time, had to treat him as a child to try and help him calm down. And at that particular moment, I had this really kind of odd feeling that all of a sudden those roles had changed around. And I was suddenly having to be the parent to help to keep him quiet. Or not necessarily keep him quiet, but help him calm down uh, in, a, in, a, in an environment that he found out of control. Get back to the yeah. stillness. Get back to the, the control. Now, now, I'm going to bring it back out of the dark. Into, into the, the light. light. As you say, you, you went you went a little bit deep there now into... Oh. No, there's nothing wrong with it because we're all going to have those uh, circumstances in our life. Now, you're at, this was about triggers. And I was going, you said lobster. All I heard was lobster. All I thought of was red and all I thought of was boiled and fricasseed and fried and how expensive it is and, and where, when would I ever get to eat lobster? And, and think and about the hierarchies the of those lobsters lobster in that pot seen. as they get cooked. <laughs> And, actually, and, actually, and never mind that, anything I've ever seen on TV was if you're picking the lobster, you're pointing them out in the tank, he's actually looking at you with two little eyes, wondering, he sees this big finger coming towards the glass, and what it is is, it's you, it's your turn, I'm going to eat you. It's, you're going to be damn expensive, but you're going to be a great experience. You're and that's be well somebody worthless. forcing in their it's hierarchy of who, who eats who. That yeah. Then you're going, what am I doing out in a, out in a restaurant eating lobster? I, I can't afford bloody yellow pack cornflakes. So I'm looking forward <laughs> to lobster time. You know. Sorry, I had a cough at that point. <laughs> I thought you were off on a rant and I had a moment. <laughs> well, as long as you're not coughing in the restaurant that I'm sitting in over my newly paid for lobster, you can thick oh, right oh. off with yourself. So, so keep social distance. Well, it's interesting because Woody um, Allen, no. in one of his films, Annie Hall, has a scene with a lobster and they managed to get a lot of fun uh, with one of the female characters that it was his love interest, uh, uh, Keating, what the name, Keating, Diane Keating. Diane Keating. And there was a great interaction going on. And later in the film, that got repeated where he tried to do the same thing with another girlfriend and she just couldn't get it. And all of a sudden, the fun of the activity of what he was doing just suddenly sipped away, a bit like the lobster suddenly getting back out and going back into the sea to escape. Ha ha, you're not eating me today. <laughs> not, not happening. happening not happening it's if you're if you're in that tank you're on the predestined tour unless you've got some greenpeace person coming in spending a hundred quid on a little lobster in the tank and getting them and chucking them in the local river probably killing him in the sense because it's probably fresh water versus sea water i don't even know but anyway there's a lob. actually i think there's a i don't even know what band or song out there lobsters it's ringing a bell in the back of my mind i'll probably come up with it in a minute but but, but we just need to find the right trigger so you can actually find it well, well, that's the thing. It's triggered. I know it's a song, and it's, 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 I know it's back to my heyday of dancing in the discos back when I was 20 years of age. I was a dancing man. I went into disco. There you go. I'm triggered. 
I went dancing. I didn't go drinking. I couldn't afford to drink on my student money. But if you wanted to meet the women and meet the girls, you met them on the dance floor. You shook the wild thing. You done the hit the life fantastic. You pelvic thrust to, to your, as if your life depended upon it. You know, that's where the battles were, were happening. There was no feckin' swipe left, right, anything in my time. It was like the in-between years. You, you disco danced across the floor. And you did the walk and dance of shame and you were lucky to meet your, your, your future wife at the other end of it if you, were, if you had any hope at all of having any inter social interaction with the opposite sex. So back to you. Well, it was funny because you're talking about dancing and all that kind of stuff. I'm suddenly kind of thinking about triggers and how, how those things happen. And I normally go to a pub quiz and quite often you hear you hear a, a question and I would always see all the parameters. I could never see the very thing in the middle. But I remember doing a little test with somebody. It's one of those sort of tests where you've got um, just the main letters and they spell things like, you know, things like posh. What does posh mean? It means port out, starboard, starboard home. OK, we're all trying to work out what, what do all these letters no, it Apparently doesn't. It does. No, it doesn't. Posh spice. Posh spice has no, nothing no, to do with no, that. No, no, it's what it is is it's, it's back port, to spice it's girls. You know it. And, I know it. Starboard home. Anyway, no, we were trying to. No, I don't know who. I don't know what planet you're on. No, that's what it's, posh is. Posh, posh, posh spice posh is. is the only answer anyway, there for posh. Let's go back. Or the second answer is if you're posh. Mate, I didn't even hear what you were saying in terms of letters. I just know if you're a posh, you're wearing pearl. You know, so like a fur coat, no knickers. That was me all day long. You know, you, you have to have all the trappings to go with the mentality and, and, and the ego. The ego, posh is an ego trapping. Well, what it soul. was in history that the people that had the money could afford to go port out and starve at home because they always got the light on the right side. Anybody that wasn't posh went on the other way and it wasn't so good. It depends yeah. where that ship Anyway, let's, going. let's forget I about mean, the ship because we're talking about triggers now at the moment. <laughs> One of the things that was happening was that I remember trying to find all these words uh, and I kept hearing people say things and I went, oh, she's just said the answer. Oh, he's just said the answer. And when I actually asked them if they knew what the answer to such and such was, I discovered they didn't. But somehow the sounds that they were making at that particular point in time triggered for me the answer. And I was able to say it. And it was right. And I remember that out of the 50 questions, I got all 50 right. And I was quite shocked because when I asked all the other people around where I thought I'd got the ideas from, they said they didn't know. And yet somehow they triggered all. Well, That's the go. universe. This is back to the u u universe whispering. That's what was happening. The uni the se it's not even real sounds. It's your interpretation of these sound effects. Yes, are, yeah. Are, you're, you're, it's opening a subliminal flow. That's it. It's, you're, 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 you're diving into the subconscious. You've stilled it enough. You know it's in there. You know you learned it. Most of my time, I can't. I'm trying to physically reach an answer. I'm trying to, I know I know this stuff. I know it's on deep archive. I just don't have the password to get back in again. You know, now I imagine I'm going to have to be hypnotized or, or to access, actually access all areas is now access denied. I don't have the password to my own memories and storage. I want, I, and never mind that, it's like what these, this, these things are triggering, these frustrations, and, uh, and that's what happens with me. I go off on one. Uh, <coughs> there's a frustration that I can't do something right. I can't, a frustration that I can't remember a date a phone number. Well, it's great you don't need to remember phone numbers anymore. But it's that type of thing. It's, it's, it's triggering well, One of the things that Jung was starting to say was that uh, when we have those, like, for example, say, for example, you, you're in the kitchen and you've put the car keys down on the other side next to the cooker and you start to head towards the cooker. And when you get to the cooker, you sit there and kind of going, what have I come here for? And you start to rummage around to try and find out what it is. Well, now, what Jung says is at that moment, what's happened is that the keys have gone from your conscience into the unconscious, and the unconscious is trying to direct you where to go. But you're fumbling around trying to find those keys, and you've forgotten what it is that you, because your mind, can only take in so much information. It's a bit like RAM on a computer. It Once it gets filled up, it has to let something out. And for what some unknown reason, it just so happens to let go of the keys. That's the reason that you've just gone there. And then all of a sudden, something else comes back in when you've forgotten and other bits of information have gone out. And all of a sudden, the keys come back into your consciousness and you kind of go, oh, that's what I'm after. And you pick them up and you go out and drive the car away. That's one of those triggers. That sounds like the onset of Alzheimer's again. Am I going up the stairs? Am I going down the stairs? I don't know where I am. I'm standing on the stairs. Everybody well, has I, it. You just remind me of, of, of something. 
We had, no, but it's those flashes. It's those flashes of, uh, of forgot what we're at. We're for, we, we lost the moment. We didn't know what we're coming. Well, if you think about going, students that are doing now, uh, degree courses, quite often a lot of them are cramming in the last six weeks all the information they just spent over the last three years to do a three-hour exam. Once they come out of the three-hour exam, they've forgotten it all and they can't remember any of it. And they they're... they're yeah. I don't know. I think I told you before the amount of courses I did when I was younger. I can't name the course name. Never mind the subject titles within the course. God forbid you ask for any content of any of the subjects. 99.99% of everything I've ever read or learned is gone, had no use in, the, in, in, in real life. You know, for me, yes. I'm sure law yeah. and things where you draw on facts and figures. But in the main, it, well, I think you were saying before, what you were proven is your capability. Well, I learning. know that when I, when I was... Not yeah, I, you I know. did an open university degree, which is something you have in the UK. And it's like a long distance sort of uh, correspondent types course. And most of it was based on doing assignments. But I tended to choose particular units that were related to what I was doing with my work because I suddenly went, do you know what? Why do two separate things when you could do one thing that happens to give you two results and you get two wins out of it? So every time I did something to study, I would study an area that I was already going to be working in anyway. And it basically complemented and built up my understanding. So well after doing finishing that course, I found that I could retain the information because I was using it in a practical way all the time. And maybe that's what's, what's actually happening is that if you are not using that information and have no use. Now, for example, um, I was teaching C-sharp programming to a load of uh, computer game students and I'd never done it before, but I'd done some kind of programming. So I, I kind of learned what I needed to do to get through that year. And I kind of thought, well, next year it'll be great because I'll be able to reuse this stuff. And then I didn't get to teach again. And then all of a sudden, all that information just goes. I have no use for it. There's no practical sense for it. Right. Now, I'm going to try and bring the word yep. trigger back in. And, and so what we're doing is we're loading the there bullets in the gun. But we've no target. The bullet, we've the ammunition now. We've, got the, we've learned something. We've got the ammunition. We, we're, the, we're the gun. And now we're trying to point it at a target. We're going, I have nothing to shoot. I don't know what, these bullets are duds. I'll have to just empty the gun again, or no, they're blanks. I shoot them and they're blanks and none of them hit home because I don't know you've become, what I'm looking you've become at. You've become aimless. Targeting. Aimless, there you go, aimless. Now, a couple of like pigeons can drop out of the sky accidentally there, I don't know. I always watch these films and they're shooting up in the air and you're going, it's going up at 9.81 metres per second. So, or it's going to fall, I know it's going to fall down the speed of gravity by a multiple, by a multiple of something. It's how many people are shot after the fact from falling bullets. I don't know. But I mean, it's triggering these ideas within me. Well, you've you, just you triggered a memory. I used to be a beater uh, when the lords and ladies used to go shooting pheasants and the beaters had to beat the pheasants out. And you were, you, you as the pheasants went up, the lords and ladies went, oh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, and all of a sudden we'd have to go, oh, hang on, <laughs> as the pellets all came down and hit us. And occasionally, on occasion, only the odd occasion, one of the beaters might get shot. <clears throat> well, if you don't move fast enough, you certainly will. That's it. That's the game. You could just 100 pints for shooting a beater. You know, it's only about 20 pints for shooting the pheasant. You know, that's the real game. You know, that, that's, that's, that's ah, what you will see those Labradors trying to chase say, after the, the beaters. The lords you know? and ladies. I, I think back of little Lord Fauntleroy. <coughs> I can't even say the word. My, my lips won't even shape that way. But but it's I'm brought back into the, into these uh, like uh, time back to your feudal times. God forbid we bring up a previous uh, well, conversation. That's only from last week. But we're, <laughs> The yeah, feudal times, I, know, I mean, I is know, only from last lords week. Lords and ladies in feudal <laughs> times, you know, and this is, I can't be, it's only going back about 10 or 20 years or 30 years in your time and you're shooting, fe you're shooting, no, you're not no, even shooting. Fest, we're picking, them, picking up. them up. Yeah. You're picking we're up just the, the Labrador. You know, I think. I was a lounge boy when I was a kid. I wasn't going off beating pheasants across the head or shooting them. But, you know, so we obviously lived in different worlds, you know, worlds apart. But now, but now our well, worlds I've are colliding. That one. And <laughs> I've come to join your world because your world seems better than that world was. No, no, no. I'm trying to get back into that world. I want to, if we went out there and earned some money and, you know, became rich and famous and then you're going to go off and buy these uh, castles in the <laughs> sky and then you're going to have all your, all your little beaters out there you know, shuffling the pheasants out so you can actually take them out with an AK-47. 
Well, what about a T-34 tank? Well, I don't, I, I, I don't know about that. It's not going to do, it's not going to make the guard, your father would turn in his grave, for God's sake. You know, you're going to be destroying the lungs. It's, 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 well, no, he was just a gardener. He, he, he'd, he'd be the next the one in line to, to have a crack at it. <laughs> yeah, good stuff, good. So, triggers. We're back to trigger. We've covered off on only fools and horses. We've the trigger in terms of pull the trigger. Watch what you're aiming at. Well, and, in the you know, HG Wells, you. in uh, Things to Come, 1936, we're going back. They actually fired a big gun to the moon and Mars. But nowadays, we use a rocket, which is what SpaceX has just taken two American astronauts to the space station. There's a trigger for you. No, I don't know. I don't know. I that might actually. Did you look at their again and going? Have we done another case of desktop publishings with Adobe Photoshop? And does something yeah. show up in the air? How do we well, know they're, 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 on the they're now with CGI and three space green suits. screens? They're in a bloody studio. Did you see their spacesuits? Their spacesuits look like B movie uh, actors' spacesuits. They didn't look proper. They didn't look as though they would actually sustain the air. No. Are we do? Are we? Playing fool the second yeah. time now, I wonder. Is it the same again? Or do you, are you, did, did we go the first time? What, what's your money on? Did we go? Did well, the, we not go? Is this the first time to the moon now? No, it's not actually the moon. It's just the space station anyway. But, it, you know, have we actually gone to the moon yet? Well, the child inside me wants to think that we have, but the adult is kind of going, Hmm, that's interesting. Maybe we're, because I know that with the SpaceX thing, uh, just when the, um, just when the, the second part or the first stage was, was coming back down to land, the camera suddenly went blank and then you suddenly cut to it landing and you went, hmm, that could have been a, a crane just lowering that into shot. A nice bit of editing done there now by, 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 yeah. by such a studios. <laughs> it, but it, again, it's, it triggers, does it cr trigger scepticism? Does it trigger conspiracy theory? Does it cons trigger resentment? Or does it trigger awe? No, or is that, I mean, are you, am I even using the word in the right context? I'm going, well, the conspiracy it, theory of the SpaceX flight, which would be quite interesting, is that um, when, when they looked out towards space, they couldn't actually see any stars yet again. So was it a studio? Was it just a bit? And then they did open the camera up a little bit. Uh, and then the, the whole thing moved around, which is quite interesting. And we did get to see the curvature of the Earth. So that might sort of upset the flat. Unless, so the of course, flat, the flat, flat earth, earth was a plate. Like, uh, yeah. are so gone, we, yeah. we could mess around with those sort of things. So we're really being triggered today with all kinds of crazy sort of things. But I think that's important because it's only once you get the crazy ideas being triggered inside the old grey matter that all kinds of possibilities, eventualities can be explored. And that's, look, I, we were mentioning um, in one of our last shows that the next step we're on now is to package it pick a podcast and platform, get some material ready for like a uh, YouTube or Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn or, and uh, to me, them even saying those words to me was, I was, it was my, it was triggering my chatterbox to go back into the negative mode and go, this is work. I don't know what to do. It's not even the work. It's, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do it. I don't know what's going to work. I don't know what's not going to work. I don't know what's right. I don't know what's wrong. And, and no, I, I don't do know. You, do you now, think, oh, then you start do, going, we, do you think that's it? because in the past, and I think this is, we're going to, I'm going to use this as a kind of question. Do you think that because in the past, when you were asked to look after a task, there seemed to be a straightforward map forward. Whereas when we look at the task that we're being asked to do, especially with the social media, there doesn't see, you were talking about trying to find a target and being aimless. And if we go back to that gun analogy, I actually think that one of the difficulties is, is that we feel that we're aimless because we can't see where the target is so we could go for it and implement specific principles and processes to try and achieve that goal. It, and it could be that if we do that, we could end up wasting all our time because that won't work and we can't see anything at the moment that we know will definitely work and bring back the results that we're looking for. Well, uh, now what's really happening here is we've got, you know, I, I, it's reminding me of, a, again, I don't know what context this is in, it's, you know, Billy, get your gun, there's a crow in the barn. It's, it's basically, you have to have your gun. 
you go, you for, there's no point in having bullets and no gun, no point in having a gun and no bullets. We've got a gun. This is, we found ourselves a gun. We found ourselves a, a, a tool to focus things. We're looking for bullets. The bullets are in these podcasts, potentially. So we've got the gun. You know, it's, we've got the capability. We've got the wherewithal. We've got the time. We've got the energy. We've got a couple of bullets. We're putting them in the barrel. Now we're going, where, what's, as you said, who are we targeting? Who's our audience? You know, or, or what tools do we want to use? And are we doing what we do? Are we a sharpshooter? Or are we just, you know, shooting it up in the air and hoping to hit something? No, we want to be sharpshooters. We want to be focused. We want to be marksmen. We want to hit home every time because the bullets are limited. You know, our time is limited. There, So we want to make them count. We're going to get good marks. And, we, and never mind that. We want to hit that bloody pheasant, bring him home, skim him, fry him, fricassee him, and have the dinner. And there's the thing about the hierarchy again, because one of the reasons we want to achieve all those goals is because we want to be ranked higher and higher so we get a bigger and bigger audience. And to do that, you've got to go up the hierarchy a little bit more and start to show what you're capable of. At the moment, we're starting from the base. So we've got a little bit of a journey to go. Ah, but now what we have is a little pea shooter gun. What we want is the AK-47. Actually, we want... What's those... A Gatling gun, but that's from the middle of the 18th century. Gatling Gatling gun. gun. There is the one. What I want is a Gatling gun. You know, I I, I don't want this little pea shooter or a musket lark. That's what we're starting off with. We're actually in one of those... Uh, virtual reality games and somebody has handed us a bloody pea yeah. shooter. We're going yeah. off the bloody war and what we need My is a My sons used to gun. play a, a and, tank and base tra- gun, uh, one and, tra- and in it you got the worst it. tank possible Aaron that Jones- always get blown out and you had to spend ages trying to get the more efficient tanks to be able to hit the targets. <laughs> That's it. So it's the energy level up. It's to get yourself more bullets. It's to get yourself a better gun. Get yourself some targets. Focus. Get and now it's like you want to score some wins. You want to use this set of tools for the purpose intended, and you want to shoot the enemy. Not one, well, not the actually. We're trying to shoot the enemy in terms of acquire customers or acquire not customers acquire an audience. We want to shoot at home, and and that's what we'd like to do. So we have the virtual gun. It's a couple of bullets in it. It's not quite a Gatling gun yet. But the aspiration is there, and we want to be. We don't the interesting want to thing is that we Actually, are that we are you. using that same analogy. We are loading up quite a few podcasts in preparation for launch. So we're going to have one after the other, after the other, after the other. We're, 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 we're actually preparing the Gatling gun so that we've got the ammunition in the belt to start no, firing no, them no, off. We've, no, this is the, the, the podcasts are the bullets. That's yeah, yeah that's bullets. what I'm saying. They, they're so the they bullets. Got, but what we're get, doing is we're preparing it. the bullets so they can go through the Gatling gun and fire off quite rapidly now are they silver bullets can they kill werewolves are they are they armored piercing bullets can they get through that tank armor because what's out there now are everything from werewolves to 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 to, 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 the, to the mad men and the stalkers and the and the god knows what's in the sense of We've got to get through the clutter and the noise of a billion people on 19 different social media channels, consuming ads left, right and centre, tick-tocking off their heads in order to get seen or heard or even have an audience. And God forbid that even happens. But we're looking forward to it. We have the bullets. We're looking for some more. We're going to set up a factory of them. We'll be manufacturing them. I'd like to think of a couple of silver ones just in case there's a few weird... Well, one of the things that we we should start to yeah, one of the things we should do is is maybe start to think of this as a game because that's what we've started to look at with the other things. Games are enjoyable to play, and once you've actually died a few times, you can respawn and start the game again. Now, thankfully, in what we're doing, we can respawn again umpteen million times and keep on having a good old crack at it. Ah, but in the the game game of of life, life, we're saying yeah. It's the game of life. It's one time around. Oh no no it's, no no! We no. Re- we're not we're, we we're not re- taking that much. Well, we don't know yet. Yeah, we yeah, don't need to go there yet. We're just. No, but the whole thing here is to be mindful of the timeline. And I think something we touched on again was I'm 52, and if the average age was 76, we're two thirds in. The next one third is more important. It's not to be faffing around with it. It's to be mindful of. You know, your time is very, 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 very valuable. So that that's what's important here. We're definitely going to gamify. That's like we're very happy to gamify what's going on because what we're saying is we want to enjoy this time. If it's a game, you know, we're, we're going to look. We're looking forward to playing. 
it's we're playing in the game. We're just trying to find life. out what the rules and are that, for that particular game, so that we we can move forward at, at a greater speed. We want to enjoy the now because don't, don't forget that's we're not trying to worry about the future that much. We want to level up. We don't want to have to you know no second life. There's you know that's the thing. It's a real in the real life. There's no second life in the game. We can redo, do again, try again. So that's fine. To separate those two pieces, we can we can try trial, trial and error. And, and that's the thing. It's not to, to get shot within the game and fall down and not get back up. You can level back up. You can get back in the game. We definitely want to get back in the game. So there we have it. We've, we've, we've had a few triggers. We've fired a few bullets. We've ended up with a Gatling gun because we went from the spear first and weighed our way up there. And now we, we're definitely finding a target to hit and we're becoming more and more crystal clear in what, we're what our objectives are and what we want to achieve. And that's to make sure that now we're getting the most out of life. Get your head in the game and pull the trigger. Thanks for listening, watching on whatever media you're using. Bye for now. Thanks a lot. Take care. <laughs> Do what it says on the tin and follow and share.